Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dan Turner, Head of Programming and Outreach for the Georgetown County Library System. And we're back recording live, uh, live streaming from the Georgetown Library for the DigiBridge Lecture Series. And this series is sponsored by South Carolina Humanities with funding provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities. And we are here today with our eighth presentation. Eight out of 10, uh, we started in July and we're going through the end of August and we'll have one presentation on Tuesday, September the 1st. All our presentation are live streamed at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and if you miss a presentation live, that's okay. They'll all be uploaded to the Georgetown County Library YouTube page, so you can catch them there afterwards. Uh, for our Facebook Live viewers out there today, please ask questions, and you can do so during the presentation. Just type your, your questions in to the comments box on our uh, Georgetown County Library Facebook page. Right. And we have another wonderful uh, presenter. Uh, we're going all over Georgetown County and examining our, our county's rich and deep history and culture. And today we have with us Laura Harriet. Laura Harriet is the owner and operator of Wilma's Cottage. See the wonderful uh, view of Wilma's Cottage right here behind us. And Laura uh, has been running this quaint and delightful bed and breakfast which is located in a very special place, Sandy Island. Uh, Sandy Island is the largest freshwater island in South Carolina, located in the middle of the gorgeous Waccamaw River. Sandy Island is, of course, famous as the island where a thriving Gullah community lives and sustains its cultural identity. The island is only accessible by boat, and Laura is here today to offer us an insider's vision of that close-knit Sandy Island community by sharing with us a history of Wilma's Cottage. And we're so thrilled and delighted to have you, Laura, with us. And I can also say if you stay at Wilma's Cottage, uh, you will get some of Laura's brilliant home cooking. And I've, I've tasted your uh, bread pudding, and that's... I more than tasted it. I consumed quite much too much of it, uh, and it's, it is worth the trip out there and worth the stay. So, Laura, Laura Harriet, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome, and thank you. And we're we uh, can't wait to hear about Sandy Island and Wilma's College. Okay. And I'll slip, move off to the right here. Okay. Sandy Island is community was found by Philip Washington who had once worked on a local rice plantation and later purchased a, po a portion of the island. Many of the cur current residents makes up the population roughly 150 are his descendants. The island is located from the Grand Scrand modern culture. So many of the elements of the Gala way of life has been reserved. Sandy Island, Sandy island is 9,164 acres island between the PD and the Waccamaw River. Sand Island is the largest undeveloped freshwater island on the East Coast. In 1880, the New Bethel Baptist Church was built by the residents of Sandy Island. The church services are still held every Sunday and visitors are, are welcome to attend with open arms. The church boy picks up visitors at Sandy Island Landing at 10 a.m. and bring them back after church service. I currently serve as assistant superintendent youth Sunday school teacher, church choir, and church custodian. In 1932, the old schoolhouse was built by Archie Huntington, a noted philosopher, with two classrooms. I attend first to sixth grade with nearly 75 other students. The school was closed in 1967. Today, it is used as a community meeting place and library. The school children now take the only school boat in South Carolina to meet their school bus that takes them to the Wagamaw School. The boat was named after Prince Washington, the great-grandson of Sandy Island community founder, Philip Washington. The island has one convenience store called Pie General Store. 
which opened in 1960, 1986. Local and visitor alike can find sodas, snacks, and Sandy Island souvenir. About Wilma Cottage. Wilma Cottage was built in 1956 by my grandparents, William and Mary Collins. I became the owner of the college in, cottage in 1995 after the death of my grandmother, Mary Collins. I combined the two names together to make Wilma Cottage to honor their memories. Wilma Cottage is a perfect place to escape from your busy day-to-day -day lives with your spouse, family, friends, church group, the other groups. It is also the only available place for visitors to stay on the island. The Cozy Cottage has five bedrooms, a living room, kitchen, den, two baths, two porches. It also has a spacious yard, great for outdoor fun. This is a perfect getaway for honeymooners, family reunion, church groups, or any other activity. While staying at Wilma Cottage, you can enjoy many activities offered by the natural landscape. The attraction of bird watching, fishing, hiking, boating, and observe the unique animals and plant, plant species. Some of the unique plants found on the island include the long leaf pine in danger, the pitcher plant, the Venus fly traps, and the dolphin femurion. The animals are some unique animals as the red, red cock woodpecker, the pleated woodpecker, a few of the fish that we found in the Great Petey and Waccamaw River include the large bass mouth, the bone fish, the mouthy species of catfish, and the black crackies. The boat landing. There are no bridge to Sandy Island, but there are four boat landing near Sandy Island. If you don't have your own boat transportation, I'll provide it when, you, when your reservation is made. Sandy Island Boat Landing, located at the end of Sandy Island Road. Watchy Watchy Landing, located at Washington Road in Merzen Let. Sand Walk, WMA, located off of Plantersville Road in Georgetown. Hagley Landing, located at the end of Hagley Drive in Paula's Island. If you, like the res if you would like to make a reservation today, you can contact yours truly, Laura Harriet, at 843-237-9252. There is a $100 non-fundable deposit required upon making reservation for your stay. Active and military personnel and senior citizens receive 10% off their stay. You might like to spend a day treat at the college for only $30. This includes a mini tour of Sandy Island and lunch. You have two choices. You can have red rice and sauces, Fried chicken, string bean, bread pudding, cornbread and tea. Or uh, you can have brown rice, fried chicken, baked chicken, green beans, banana pudding, or cornbread. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this information, a little information about Sandy and Wilma Cottage. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will try my best to answer them for you today. All right, Laura, thank you so much. Laura Harriet again, and Wil Wilma's Cottage on Sandy Island, that beautiful, uh, beautiful island in the middle of the Waccamaw River. Um, and I did have a couple of, of questions for you. And what what do you do on a mini tour of Sandy Island? Where, where do you, what do people get to see? On the mini tour of Sandy Island, if you don't have your transportation, if it's over 15 people, I would get the school boat, permission for the school boat. I'll have somebody else, if not the school boat, have them to have their pontoon and pick them up at Sandy Island Landing, and then I'll pick them up. I have a vehicle over there, and I can ride about eight at a time. And for those who can't walk, I'll pick them, take them time by time. Then we'll go at the cottage, and after we eat, then they'll ask me questions if they want to know anything else. Then I'll give them a ride by the old schoolhouse, and then we'll stop, and if they want to ask me any question, then we'll ride at the church, and then they'll go inside the church if they want to. We sing a little song together, and then we'll return back for the tour. And um, what, what song do you sing typically? The number one song we tried to sing is Amazing Grace, yeah. uh, This Little Light of Mine. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, and so that, yeah, that uh, spiritual tradition. Yes. Uh, that, uh, and 
assume most most folks uh, know that song and amazing and everybody and tune in and then i'll ask them would y'all like to sing us would y'all suggest one then if they don't then we'll start and then i always sing the, i trip the little turn i'm talking about amazing grace and then they get oh wait that comes yeah from. and then <laughs> and so it's a wonderful kind of communal experience yes. out there and they really get to inhabit the, the, just the old way of living, you the know, just ways. riding on the thing, walking in the sand, some want to walk, some want to ride, and just lay back, just forget about what's going on the other side if they come and spend a night, you know. Yeah, yeah. and that's, uh, that's part of it. It's getting away, uh, you know, it's all around, uh, you know, we, we think we're making progress uh, everywhere else. We're, you know, getting ahead, uh, and, you know, there was a, a while there that, uh, uh, Sandy Island and Gullah culture, it was, it was seen as something that was, you, you should have been ashamed for. Uh, that was the, the, it was being left behind and you were being left behind if you were Gullah and uh, you, weren't, you weren't speaking proper English and uh, you were, it was something that was backwards. And, you know, I think the, like, the view has changed that yeah. maybe there's something good in those those traditional ways and maybe in modern culture yeah, something you just we're can't getting get a little away. lost. I mean, no matter how, there's going to be a word that I say that you probably do. Uh, it might be something where I cook or maybe I clean or, you know, just that's the, those are things that can always be there. So, And it was, it was worth, you know, kind of not uh, keeping that island uh, pristine as possible and right. preserving those yes. ways. You're going to miss them when they're gone. De definitely. And, and so, and and you're a big part of that, uh, and people do want to come, come on and stay and get away from all that rush of, of modern life and mm -hmm. you know all the technology and the phones that are, don't, you know, it's, we might question whether we're really making progress yes. out there or not. And this, there's a lot of stability here uh, in that in those traditional ways, um, and it. And a lot of people are coming back to Sandy yes, Island too, the, the yes, community members. Yeah. So that's another thing too. And this is the Wilma's Cottage is, you said, the only place available to stay. To stay. Um, so that's unique uh, as well. Um, and you mentioned the food, uh, which, you know, I, and I can, obviously I already can verify the, uh, the bread pudding that you cook, but, uh, what, I guess where you, you mentioned those other dishes and the red rice and sauces, uh, yeah, string beans, the cornbread, the fried chicken, and the banana pudding. Yeah. Well, I guess it's not on this, but anyway, right now in Surfside, found Surfside Farmers Market, I'm there on Tuesday. Okay. And I'm offering the red rice and sauces, breakfast rice, and the bread pudding. Wow. Okay, so you're. Selling those on Tuesdays yeah. Yeah. if at you want to come, but do yeah. that to, to the problem we got going on now. There, people I was going to give you my telephone number if anybody want to prepare some meal for them, I'll be happy to bring it to them. Okay, because mm -hmm. the COVID situation, yes. but yeah, and so and those are uh traditional dishes, as right? Well. Yeah, well, the red rice is definitely the yes, everybody yeah. like that, and the bread pudding that's a long history goes back years to years. Yes. And where did you learn to cook those? I just watch my parents and grandparents and yeah. I just do it until I got the hang of it and then. Yeah. So, so I guess like you said, is history and whatever is never gonna go away. That's something that's gonna steal at me and I'm trying to get my grandkids to, in tune so they could pick up what I left off. Yeah. It's just something you, you, you picked up from your, uh, your grandparents, your parents, and it, it, it passed uh, through you and that's a real, the, uh, that food, that's a kind of knowledge and it, it sustains you, I mean, it keeps you going literally, yeah. <laughs> physically in your body, but it also, you know, there's the something kind of uh, spirit, spiritual. That, yeah, spiritual. You're healthy and healthful and spiritual as well, uh, and you hope. Uh, Everybody in the thing will get the love of it, the love that gets it, that I feel when I'm cooking it, so it just extend out to the people when they come and they want to come back yeah. or they'll, you know, whatever. It's, it's not just making a meal, there's something else. It's it, yes. gathering people together yeah. and bringing them, that, bringing them that in fellowship and Fellowship with the love, Fe yes. Fellowship, mm -hmm. and that's, that's really the, the deeper part of it, and that's carried forward in that, that food traditions, and it's about fellowship and family and, 
and in a culture. Yeah, you know? and I enjoy it. And it's and it's fun. It's too. fun to meet new people and with different ideas and just how they think. And you know, they would say, "Oh, we never heard yeah. of Sandy Arm." You know, never. Yeah, and it's uh, it's such a small place on the map. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can certainly you you even though it is a it's for a freshwater island, gotcha. as we said, it's the, it's a big freshwater <laughs> island, but you know, in the larger view, it's a tiny little place, yes. and yet such a a deep uh, history. Yes and a, a culture and, uh, you know, founded uh, by descendants of former enslaved yes. Africans. And yes. so you have that deep history mm -hmm. as well. That is definitely true. Um, and I think the, the, the founder who founded, I think they wanted to keep it because a lot of, that's why I heard a lot of people here is property, I guess, so that people wouldn't sell because I live on the piece of Wilma Cottage was given to me, but then the, where my house is at is heirs property. And my grand, great grandparents said nobody to cut off a cell. So I guess the so history could keep living on and on. Yeah. So for one generation could be. And now there was, you meant, there was a threat. Uh, yes. And yes, you, yes. you, kind of lived through that, you were there yeah. during that time, but uh, could you tell us a little bit about that situation? Well, where... everybody was sort of, you know, worried and stuff, but due to, um, I can't even fix the man name. Uh, maybe well, Dana Beach? Dana Beach, yeah. he was a blessing, and he still is a blessing because yeah. we kept in touch, and they did what they could do to help very so much because I think he said in his book he said that he, there he one of the lawyers went to the lawyer office and one of the papers slipped away and they got the paper so they were ready for them when they got the coat so that's how they mostly went in yeah. and sadly right after that happened I think one of the guys died yeah, yeah uh, uh, Mr. This, Wall mm -hmm. uh, on yeah uh, Craig Wall and so the the develop Roger Milliken and Craig right. Wall were these right, yeah. businessmen who wanted to develop it and yeah probably put golf courses yes, and hotels they weren't going to put there. us off the arm, but the way they was going to have it fixed, we, they was going to put a bridge, but we wouldn't have no answer to the bridge unless it was a funeral or something. Yes. That was sad. Yeah, and so it would have, you know, displaced... Uh, the whole thing. The whole thing would have been gone and, and wouldn't have come back. And uh, so that was uh, back in the, I guess, the, the 80s and yes. Dana Beach and yes. his wife, Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. uh, they were... Very, uh, very helpful yes. in the Coastal Conservation League mm -hmm. and uh, and the and the folks on Sandy Island they worked together stood their ground yes, and worked yes. together and yeah. uh, and kept it so that it's it's here uh, today and you can you know uh, it's something that it still is yes. independent and right you you, mm -hmm. um, you you have your own place but you can get a little bit of that if, if that experience and that cultural sharing. Mm -hmm. Uh, by going out coming and staying, up, up. and you obviously you'll have a, a wonderful and knowledgeable host who knows to, to that deep them. past. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, that's terrific, and you'll be treated very well, fed well, and you talked about the nature out mm -hmm. there. It's it's like a, it's a nature it's, preserve, yes, really. Yeah. It is. Yes, nature preserve. Um, the the longleaf pines yeah. and mm -hmm. the uh, the woodpeckers Peppers. and. You and know, you can even fish, fish. And it's great fishing <laughs> out there as well. So hiking, yeah, me and I. Hiking, yeah. beautiful so, uh, yeah. hikes and yeah, so. uh, lagoons, and mm -hmm. it, it's just a gorgeous place. So we're, you know, it's we got we got lots of golf courses around. There's plenty of hotels, and <laughs> but you know, Sandy Island is a whole new different. This idea. is a different a thing. Peace of mind, carefree living. Yeah. The way it used to be. And it's so carefree living the, the way, way it used, used to, to be. be, and that's a good. Uh, that's a good thing, and keeping that alive uh, is what what Laura's doing. And so, and we and we miss it uh, when we we think we're moving ahead. We might not. We might just be hitting into a wall. And this is a, a different. It's an alternative. Yes. To that. Yes. Um, so. yes. We, one thing about it, we never ran from hurricanes or nothing. We just stayed right there. And yeah, another another aspect yes, there. It's the so. highest point in South Carolina. Wow, I did I didn't know that. Yes, so, it and, is the highest point in South Carolina. And as so, you keep going, the hills and get higher. And the the flooding in, in hurricanes, you don't experience it don't, that. It, you know, well, last year when the crest with it did, but then it didn't influence. It didn't 
we didn't was not envious from not going to our homes. We could still get out, you know. Yeah, so generally it's protected. Yeah. Yes, uh, and with the river and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's an amazing thing as well. So it was it was well placed, Sandy Island. Yes. Yeah. No other place I would want to be. <laughs> that's saying something. It's home, and it's it's been home for a long time, and uh, will continue to be. So that's a yes. it's a great story and a great history there. And we really appreciate you being here with us to share it. Well, I appreciate it and I thank you and anytime and I hope you understand me. I, I got a little color in me too, so yes. some of the words might then come out like you should, but I think y'all get it. No, and that's, this is part of the, the diverse history. I think, uh, you know, that's such a special, it's a special part and adds to, uh, it enriches and expands uh, what, you know, it's not, it's not wrong, it's right, and it's, that just, uh, you know, that's part of, uh, of what we are in Georgetown County, and, you know, it, it's, Gullah has been here a lot longer than most people yeah, have, got, and he was supposedly are speaking correct <laughs> English. Right, and yeah, we try. I, I've got, I'm from Spartanburg, so I've got my uh, upstate accent, and, you know, it's a wonder people understand me half the time, so. I got you. <laughs> uh, but you did, you did a great job, and we're very appreciative of that uh, insider's view, and uh, so thank you so much. You're and welcome. We'll say thank you to South Carolina Humanities thank again you. for sponsoring yeah. this and making it possible and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, great to showcase some, some local uh, knowledge and local experts. And thank you again to Heather Pelham on camera and uh, Truman Wenz as well out there working the soundboard and the live stream. Uh, much appreciated their labor in all this as well and our director, Dwight McInvale, for making this all possible. So we will see you again on Tuesday, uh, and we will have uh, Dedrick Bonds uh, talking with us for the next segment, and we're getting towards the end, just two left, Dedrick Bonds and then Marilyn Hemingway on September the 1st. Thanks so much and have a great afternoon. There is nothing quite like this place, 9,000 acres of prehistoric sand dunes rising up out of the water. This is the largest undeveloped freshwater island on the east coast. Sandy Island lies between the PD and Waccamaw rivers in Georgetown County. It's accessible only by boat and kids who live here take the state's only school boat to attend classes on the mainland. Most of Sandy Island's 120 residents are the descendants of freed slaves from local rice plantations. In 1996, developers wanted to build a bridge to harvest all of the island's timber. But South Carolina and the Nature Conservancy purchased most of the island and turned it into a refuge. It was an easy decision. There are lots of endangered species of animals and plants that thrive on the island. There's a new two-mile hiking loop here established by the Nature Conservancy that can show us more. Come on! We're hanging with my main florum, Spanish moss! Spanish moss is a plant that grows on trees throughout the Lowcountry. It absorbs moisture right out of the air. It can grow up to 8 meters long, and it doesn't even have any roots. These are water oaks. These trees grow really fast, and their acorns are an excellent food for ducks, turkeys, squirrels, and deer. You'll never guess why they call this the red maple. Not only do its leaves turn a brilliant red color, so do its stems and flowers. It makes seeds that all sorts of woodland critters love. You've smelled this one before. It's the red cedar. Its fragrant wood is used for pencils, chests, wooden pails, and fence posts. Believe it or not, this is sparkleberry. In the spring, it has white flowers that turn into little black fruit that sparkles, hence the name. I'm standing in front of a loblolly pine, one of the fastest growing southern pines. The meaning of the name loblolly 
is actually mud puddle, where these pines often are found growing. It takes a village to grow a pocassin. It grows in places that are flooded, so look out for a water moccasin. A pocassin community is actually a group of evergreen shrubs, including pine, loblolly, black gum, red maple, pond cypress, and sweet bay magnolia. These are turkey oaks. They grow in poor sandy soil and can be up to 30 feet tall. It is a kind of red oak with heavy hard wood of little value except for fuel. This is a forest of longleaf pine. This is what Sandy Island is mostly made up of. Longleaf pine forests are home to a diverse community of plants and animals, including the endangered red cockaded woodpeckers. We might still see a feral hog on this trip. They've been here since the Spanish released them in the 1500s. They engage in destructive rooting and wallowing activities, but they're still really cool to see. You liken this? It's reindeer moss. It's a kind of moss that forms in clusters and carpets the forest floor. I know there's a lot of it right here, but if trampled, overgrazed, or burned, it can take many decades to return. Thanks for coming to Sandy Island! Hanging out with some darling florum. Look at my boy, Spanish moss! <laughs> <laughs> There is nothing quite like this place. 9,000 acres of sand dunes, I think. I, hold on. <laughs> to harvest all the timber. Nope. You want me to do it in a lower register? Nope, no, you're good. Higher register? Nope, hit it. Okay. I forgot my line. Line. <laughs> Sorry, I got the giggles one second. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tongue twister, I swear! <laughs> wait, wait, I've got the giggles. These are Walter Oaks. These are Walter Oaks. It's water! These are some fresh H2O Oaks. Walter Oaks. Water! Stop that. Ready? Say it. These are Walter Oaks. I'm sorry. Believe it or not, this is Spoker, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay, Alex. Hello. Hello, Alex. Hello. Hello. I'm Alexander Pelham. No. You ready? Ready, Alex? Alex? <laughs> Alex. Alex. Nope, back up, back. It takes a village to grow a pocassin including the endangered red cockadit